Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Texas Cup, checking in team number 12401, Quantum Fusion, uh, coming in from uh, Mission Texas here. Uh, really cool looking robot, by the way, love the aesthetics of it. Uh, we're gonna be going through, of course, the uh, entire uh, scoring process here, including, uh, of course, the rings going to the robot, wobble goal mechanism, and to help me out with that, I have Adelie, Daniela, Adela, and Sarah, and here's the thing, this robot here, I really just like some of the components and features going on with this, and we're gonna learn about this. All this and more coming up on Behind the Bot. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker is a leading medical device company and is looking for those in first to join their team as interns or for a great career. Come join a company that will actively support you being in first at careers.stryker.com. If you're on an FRC or FTC team and you're currently meeting safely in person and have a functional robot, we'd love to have you on our Behind the Bots or Behind the Bumper segments. Go ahead and reach out to us on any of our social channels, on Discord, or send us an email at admin at firstupdatesnow.com and let's get your team scheduled to be on First Updates Now. So Adelie, start us out in the front of this robot here. We'll be talking about the intake. Looks like you got some Go Build the Wheels, uh, some of the Gecko Wheels going on here. So tell me a little bit more about some of the process and design to it. All right, well, here we have what you said, the four Go Build a Gecko wheels. We also have a 312 RPM motor here. Um, this is the main source of power that rotates this shaft, if you can demonstrate that. These grippy wheels allow us to intake it, leading it to our next mechanism, which is the feeder. Um, what allows us to lift this mechanism is this Go Build a Servo that we have here. Um, our intake has always been like this. Luckily, this was our first our first design and it actually worked out really well for us throughout the whole season so uh, i'm really grateful for that for picking this design so on the uh the drop down intake that you have here uh so when you drop it down your clearance is pretty close so really the whole point is just in the beginning of the match but uh do you also bring it up like so you don't get hit by other teams or uh, how does that work in a typical uh, uh against other robots match of course well during the matches, sometimes our rings do get stuck because of our design. I don't ah, know if you can sure. see here. Um, when we talk about the feeder, Daniela can explain a little bit more about that. But um, this kind of allows us to lift up our intake and drop the rings back out so they would um, get unstuck. That makes a lot of sense. Well, speaking about that, let's go over to Daniela, who's going to be talking about uh, the feeder into the robot. Lots of belts uh, going on here. I'm really curious on uh, what you did to make sure those belts aren't slipping or moving oh, around or anything like course, that, too. Of course, yeah. So for our second mechanism, let me move this down real quick so you guys can get a better look at it. Um, this is our feeder mechanism, right? So in order for us to like bring the rings in, we use a conveyor belt system that runs the rings from the bottom instead of from the top. We had originally had it where it would bring the rings from the top, and we had something motorized, something like this here but it wasn't very really consistent and we saw that it would get stuck a lot. So when we started running, uh, for example, like here, let me just fix this in really quickly. Uh, when we saw that uh, this convention, the conveyor belt, sorry, worked a lot better, it was a lot more smoother and it allowed it to glide very easily. Also right here, I don't know if you guys can see, this little uh, mechanism is our ring stopper. And we have to use this in order to stop the rings from officially going all the way to the top so we can let this shooter over here go to its full potential. Uh, so speaking about that, we'll go in the shooter here. So it looks like you got a, a Colson type wheel mm -hmm. uh, for this as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Talk to me a little bit, I'm, I'm curious, I'd love to hear more about uh, this 3D printed roller here uh, and some yes. of the compression that goes into yes, that as well. Yes, exactly, that's exactly correctly. Uh, you're correct here. Uh, this is a custom wheel that we had to print. We needed the perfect amount of uh, pressure or compression, like you said, between the the flywheel and this custom dead wheel, uh, because we need the perfect amount of compression to shoot out the right trajectory into the tower goals. Uh, we experimented with a lot of different uh, custom uh, dead wheels, I guess you can yeah. say. Now we had a, a lot of different sizes, and we found that this one right here was our best one, best option for this one. Well, it makes a lot of sense, and looks like it's working well so far. So, Della, you're going to come in and talk about the uh, wobble goal mechanism, right? Uh, and talking. And one of the things I always love to ask teams about is how did you determine like how much space you need in order to uh, help the drivers out with that a little bit of air as well, too? Yes, of course. Well, we decided to put it on the side. At first, it was kind of difficult because we were supposed to put it to the front. Um, when we saw that the it, it would go um, more than 18 inches, we decided to put it to the back. So that's why we use a bevel gear. We also use a 117 Go Build a motor because we needed a high torque motor. 
And with the bevel gear, it can turn to the other side and easily grip our wobble goals. Um, this is a 3D printed, printed custom part of our, um, of our gripper. Um, a servo is connected to it to open it. Um, we, we have extra of these, and I think um, it wasn't that hard to print. It was just, um, we did have several designs before it, but that's the one that worked more efficiently. If it works, that's what you go with, right? Yes. So absolutely. Well, Sarah, I'll wrap us up here on this robot. We'll be talking about uh, the camera on it, so you get a little bit of vision going on on your bot. Yes. Tell me about uh, what you use that camera for and how it's been operating in the match. Okay, so at the very front of the camera, uh, I mean, of, of the robot, we use a camera. It is used for the scanning part of the challenge, which is we have to scan some uh, some rings. We use Vuforia and TensorFlow to allow this uh, camera to work. Now, if you can see, it's actually mounted on the servo. And we we mounted it on the servo. It's not connected because uh, we found that this was the most steadiest. It gave it some. We were able to move it around without it moving. After we just uh, we could put it in place, right, without an actual barrier. I mean, an actual like placement. If that makes sense. Okay. And then we also put uh, barriers here to move from one side to one side, depending on sure. what side we are in in the challenge, either blue or red. Are you actually uh, manually moving that, or is the camera yes. kind of tracking? It, uh, we manually move it. Uh, it's at the very beginning of the challenge. If we're on the red side, we place it like this. If it's gotcha. on the blue side, we place it like that. Makes, and then the rest of the match is pretty much seen where it needs to be then, right? Yes. Okay. After that, it stays out. And that's why we use the servo, because it's very steady. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Well, Quantum Fusion, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to speak to us about your robot here. I uh, can't wait to say I perform at the uh, Texas Cup, but making it here, obviously, a fantastic accomplishment. Uh, so good luck to you here at this competition and any future ones we might see as well. Thanks for taking the time. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with a company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support FUN by joining FUN Nation. Click the Join button and just for a few bucks a month, you unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.